Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Crypto Keith. This is Crypto Living. And if you like cryptocurrencies, the blockchain, and Bitcoin, then hit that bell down below me and be a part of the Crypto Living Notification Squad. Let's go ahead now and watch the video. Today, we're going to look at what is an ICO. So people have made millions of dollars off of ICOs. Some uh, ICOs have went up 100 times, 200 times within a year. And this is uh, the golden ticket, what everybody's trying to get. There's a lot of ICOs that will not get you there. Some ICOs will even go down in value after they're released to an exchange. A lot of times it's a week to a month by uh, the time it's released to an exchange. So between the time you invest your money and the time you can get your money back out, it's about a month or less, which is very um, enticing for investors and better, very enticing and very attractive for investors. A lot of times when you're investing in the IPO, you have to wait years, sometimes five years, or, or sorry, you're not even investing in the IPO. A lot of times when people invest their capital in these early startups, um, usually venture capitalists are the only ones that get to do this, but now we can with ICOs. When they invest, these venture capitalists um, in startups, they usually have to wait about five years before that company goes onto the public market and an IPO is, um, is, is actually taking place. So they publicly offer the token or the coin or in this case, the, the securities uh, for these companies, five, 10 years after they created the company, after they started making money and succeeding, because they've realized that they want to cash out. They're tired, all these people that invested in the early days are tired of this project. They want to move on, take their money out, put it in other things. And this is when they get the opportunity to do that, kind of like when ICOs or tokens are released to exchanges. That's kind of like the IPO for for an ex, uh, initial coin offering. It's actually when it's released to an exchange. So that's why it's kind of confusing and they shouldn't really be called ICOs. The only reason they are is because they are an in initial coin offering. Uh, an IPO is an initial public offering. So it's not the same thing. Just because it's ICO and IPO doesn't mean um, they're the same thing because ICO should really have an IPO too. It should be called IPO once it's released to an exchange. That would clear things up a little bit more for people. How much does it cost to run an ICO? Well, it's about, a, a lot of people will say about 100 to 300, even $500,000 especially if you want to have a successful one and raise these million dollar numbers. But you can do it with something like $50,000, maybe even $20,000 with a simple project, because all you need to uh, do before you have an ICO is a lot less with uh, an IPO. All you, uh, all you need to pay for though, to have your ICO, um, they'd be product development and advisory, platform and technology development, legal and compliance advisory, white paper writing, smart contract and ICO coin development, um, someone who's a developer on the Ethereum blockchain or other blockchains. There are other blockchains other than Ethereum now that you can build upon, something like Glisk or bite ball bites, ICO pre-sale management, ICO community and investor relations, escrow and custodial advisory, distribution and treasury management, security audits, um, and you're gonna want to have, I don't know if I, I said that, but some sort of web development, yeah, platform and technology development, I said. 
So that's what you're need, going to need to pay for. A big part of an ICO is their white paper, which outlines um, a sci it's on the scientific writing outlining the mechanics behind what this project is trying to do, what it's trying to solve, um, and things like that. Basically, a white paper is for investors to give them everything they want to know before investing in a project. Um, one thing to note, though, is that a, a lot of ICOs do not have a product. They're selling you an idea. And these are the ICOs that people are learning not to invest in or to be careful when investing in. Because um, a lot of the more experienced and successful uh, initial coin offerings had a product and a lot of people say that's the only way to do it and if not you're kind of doing it wrong but the more we go into the future the more rules they're going to have in the beginning there are no rules people in the community are going to start giving uh initial coin offerings rules um key things to look for if you if you're going to invest and things like that to the point where bad ICOs will not be profitable anymore because people will have learned from experience and um, just time. 10 keys for evaluating initial coin offerings or ICO investments. Team composition, uh, a thread or forum like bitcointalk.org. Stage of the product and VC investments. So a lot of times before the ICO, they will call up some venture capitals or work with some venture capitals to basically fund the ICO. Like I said, it costs 100000 to 300000 or even more to run an ICO. So this is uh, what they get venture capitals to invest in. But they get, their, uh, they get their investment back when the ICO happens or they get... Um, tokens. So sometimes a certain amount of tokens is allotted to the initial investors. And then when the, the token is released to exchanges, they can then cash out and get their money back. Either way, venture capitalists have a lot less period to get, they have to wait to get their money back when investing in ICOs as well. So there's no, no shortage of VCs that want to invest in these projects as well, especially when you start looking at the numbers and show them some of the successful projects. Community and media, what do they need the token for? Is the blockchain necessary? Or are they just using things like blockchain as buzzwords to get your money? Do they have an unlimited or a hard cap? So how much money are they asking for? Token distribution, when and how. So how long do you have to wait to get your money back and who gets what? How, how much is going to the developers? Uh, is half of the coins going to the developers? Because a lot of times you want to see an ICO that has about 75%. So Ethereum raised, sorry, a lot of times um, ICOs um, will even release their tokens onto exchanges within hours after the ICO. You, you can get your money back within hours. But a lot of times they have to develop, or sometimes they have to develop uh, a beta version of a platform before, or, or develop the, the technology to distribute the coins and uh, hold the coins before they can release those coins because again sometimes they don't have a product before they raise the money and sometimes they're asking for this money so they can fund development so you want to keep that in mind too and look for how long it's going to take so ethereum uh, was about one year between the ICO and token distribution and it ga had gains of around 500 percent after a year auger uh, one plus years at 1,500%, so 1,500%. And sometimes this creates good hype and it creates an anticipation for the token and then it goes crazy once it hits the markets. 
Augur had this token distribution. Development and operations, 75%. Legal and contingency fund, uh, 15%. Marketing and community outreach, 10%. This is uh, the amount of tokens that they distributed, I think, for their own team. So the tokens that they held. But a lot of times uh, you can see right on the website how many tokens they're holding, how many they're giving out for investors, so people that invested in the ICO, how many the developers are, are getting and things like that, how much for marketing. You want to also evaluate the white paper. So most uh, beginner or typical investments investors don't read through the white paper. If you want an advantage on other investors, definitely read the white paper because it'll give you an idea of whether you're investing in a solid company or one that's just trying to get money from people. And it's all about uh, visuals, graphics, and creating marketing and um, basically hype. Quality of the code. So go to GitHub and check out their source code. Again, it is open source, so it's uh, the source code is open to anybody who wants to look at it. So also you want to look at the bottom line. ICOs will become more and more mainstream as a method for fundraising. There will be plenty of projects to choose from. It will become even harder to access these projects and they will be, uh, over time, ICOs will get more and more expensive because there will be more people that are willing to put their money into it and some people are, will be offering big amounts of money. Um, because right now, a lot of these big investors, big venture capitalists, this is new to them. This has changed. So you can take advantage of that. You can um, be with the trend, and you can be one of the first people on the boat this time and be ahead of the game and be teaching everybody else something. And you can be uh, at the forefront of this if you get in now. If you wait till everybody else is getting in, most likely it will have been too late. So in 2018 and the end of 2017, here uh, the last month, we're going to have a lot of ICOs coming out. So that's what my goal is to do. And here with this channel, we're going to be investing in some ICOs and seeing how that goes. So if you want uh, to learn more about that and experience that, subscribe and hit that bell down below and you will see our, our videos when we come out with them. So how to succeed in initial coin offerings and not get sued? So for people that are, are doing the initial coin offering, this is a little a tip for people that are interested in creating their own ICOs. So to IPO or issue initial coin or initial public offering, to the public is the time in which a, pr a private company with only private shareholders being accredited or professional investors, the founders, employees, advisors, and others with close ties to the public can access the public markets at large. And the public markets are hedge funds and other retail investors who invest in stocks. Hence, IPO is a sem seminal event for private company when leading up to this millions are spent in due diligence document per so basically an IPO costs millions of dollars to prepare there's so many documents you have to fill out basically stacks upon stacks you have to file before you can do an IPO So I'll put this uh, link in the description down below if you're interested in it, but um, so here we have five, five of the most successful cryptocurrency ICOs to date. Iconomy, Waves, Lisk, Golem, and Ethereum. So. Let's look up just these uh, two top two or three here. Number one, Ethereum. The Ethereum ICO was one of the first of its kind 
to put this concept of initial coin offering on the map. The team successfully raised uh, 18 million US dollars, which was a fair amount. They didn't raise too much more than they needed, a very, very humble amount uh, uh, Ethereum raised, which is what, what made it lead, probably helped lead to its success uh, long term. So over the course of 42 days, they uh, raised the $18 million, making it the number one most funded ICO in cryptocurrency. Ever since receiving that amount of funding, Ethereum has quickly grown and successfully come, become the second most valuable cryptocurrency ecosystem in the world. Now we also have uh, Bitcoin Cash, which is, um, is, is more expensive than uh, Ethereum. So even the, the Ethereum creator gave, um, gave a shout out to uh, the person that created Bitcoin Cash because that's uh, very interesting that Bitcoin Cash surpassed Ethereum. Ethereum has such a huge economy built around it now and so many different uh, people involved in it. Although it is not the most successful ICO, the DAO raised US 150 million, but the project had to be abandoned. Ethereum has proven to be very successful in its own right. So number two is Golem Project. Raising 8.6 million in mere minutes is quite an amazing feat. And most people will always remember the Golem Project for achieving that goal. This significant amount of interest was not entirely unexpected, considering Golem is the centralized global market for computing power. It is evident these types of ICOs will always see great interest from investors all over the world. Being able to rent computer resources from other people in exchange for Golem network tokens is something to look forward to. Number three is Lisk. The Lisk platform has seen its fair share of success, especially during the ICO phase with 5.8 million US dollars raised in a short amount of time. Investors were more than excited to invest in this new crypto-based project. Ever since launching the platform in the second quarter of 2016, the team has been actively working on adding improvements to the project and its wallet. The team also liquidates some of their Bitcoin raised during the ICO as part of their liquidation plan. A total of 101 Bitcoin remains under their control, according to the recent Twitter update. So they still have a lot of their Bitcoin that they raised in the uh, ICO because ICOs raise Bitcoin and Ethereum, sometimes things like Litecoin and the other uh, odd cryptocurrency they accept. But it's mostly uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin that are accepted to fund ICOs. So it's a good way for a lot of people to learn how to start using Bitcoin and Ethereum. And if you want to invest and take advantage of this opportunity, you have to uh, buy some Bitcoin or Ethereum. And we can teach you a lot about that on this channel too if you uh, need some tips. So Lisk is also kind of like Ethereum but it's uh, basically a decentralized application platform for other companies and projects, blockchain projects, to build uh, upon Lisk. There are other ICOs out there. Um, there are other ICOs out there that don't run on the blockchain. So things like IOTA um, run on something separate from the blockchain, something we'll get into another day, but not all ICOs have to be on the blockchain. They, most of the time, they do have to be a decentralized application. That's the number one uh, limit or rule for ICOs. They have to be open sourced decentralized applications. So something that nobody really owns, something that um, 
the people fund for the people, basically. Something that helps everybody profit and something that helps change the world or make the world better. Something that solves a problem. These are all good things to look for when you're investing in an ICO or looking for an ICO to invest in. And to invest in an ICO, this is my last point, you need a special wallet. You need something like Exodus Wallet or other wallets. So if you're going to invest in an ICO, make sure you follow the rules and the steps. If you have not got instructions on how to invest in the ICO, don't do it. And don't be in any rush to do this. Like we said, there's lots of ICOs that will be coming out in the future. So just take your time, learn all you can like we're doing, and uh, you'll have more success that way. And make sure you invest or you have some uh, guidelines or rules for what you invest in and what tokens you invest in so you don't get uh, caught in some bad investments. So I'm Crypto Keith, and uh, we'll see you next time with some ICOs, good ICOs that are uh, initial coin offerings open right now that you can invest in. We'll see you later. Peace. We connect to the seers in the house tonight. Gonna get your money right, right, right. You got to invest a little something. You got to stake a little something. Make a fortune with what you invest in. Right, 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 right. Tell the stakers. Let me hip you guys, my cash flow decentralized With cryptocurrency, all my friends are hypnotized I got a blockchain for my wallet, boy don't get surprised 